Hello everyone, thanks for tuning in to My Get to Amazon EMR video series. Today our topic is cluster segmentation schemes. My name is Tanzir Mustafi, I am a specialist SA with AWS. So this particular section is uh, mainly for analytics leader who actually managing or uh, supporting a large analytics platform. It's also for infrastructure managers who are actually responsible for their Hadoop infrastructure as well as Hadoop administrators who are actually managing or maintaining their Hadoop infrastructure or like a, for their uh, data lake or for big, different big data use cases. So before we actually talk about cluster segmentation scheme, we need to know like a, why we, need to, we can do that and why is that. So the main benefit of Amazon EMR is it's very flexible. So you can actually do like a, you can isolate your storage and compute layer. So in EMR, that means your storage layer and compute layer don't have to be tied together. You can easily scale up storage or you can easily scale up your compute independently. In EMR, Amazon EMR, you can use different instance type and cluster size to handle different workloads. That means you don't have to stick with a fixed number of instance type or hardware configuration. You also don't have to stick with a fixed number of nodes. You can bring up any types of con hardware configurations and any types of size to handle different workloads. And EMR currently uh, have more than 20 different applications. So, and each of the applications have different versions. So we have a variety of applications, application in multiple versions to serve different workloads. And you can also use Amazon EC2 spot instances to bring down your cost uh, significantly. So how you can use this flexibility to cre create different segmentations in Amazon EMR, when you actually migrate to Amazon EMR. So there are different cluster segmentation uh, approaches. So the first one is cluster configuration size to serve specific workload. That means when you actually do Hadoop-based workloads or big data workloads, you probably have different uh, workloads and different types of use cases. So you can actually can configure your cluster to, uh, and size your cluster to serve different workloads. Then there's another way actually, another reason you can actually isolate uh, like a different users based on their roles. For example, you have clusters multiple clusters, and you may have different users with different access. So you can isolate your uh, user access by using different cluster with the different security settings. In a similar way, in, a, like a, in security control, for example, you may have coverage cluster, but you have some cluster that you just want to bring up around some ETL, and no user actually using that uh, cluster for like a consuming or running any queries. In that case, you may not need to cover as that cluster. That means you can have a carverse cluster which is more secure, or you can have a non carverse cluster just uh, to do some ETL. Then similarly, say you have a cluster where you're just doing ETL or some machine learning workload. In that case, you don't need to anyone to have access to this cluster. Uh, similarly, you have one cluster, say you want to bring all your user to that cluster. So in EMR, uh, Amazon EMR, you can actually have this control network access. That means you can have one cluster which is open to your user, and you can have another cluster which is closed. Just it, it actually just executes a job. Similarly, disaster recovery and better redundancy. That means you can have multiple cluster, and you are using SC as your storage, and you are actually isolating your uh, meta store outside of a cluster. In that case, if you lose your cluster, you are actually not losing your data because your data still stays in Amazon S3. Similar way, it can be also helpful for disaster recovery. For example, you have one cluster in one region, you have another cluster for DR, and in that case, if you lose your cluster or region, you can still have the same data replicated in a different region. So if you look at the swim lens here, so this is very typical in every workload we see uh, in on-premise especially. So the top portion that shows like a zero to 23, that actually shows the entire day workload. And if you look at the left side columns, so we have different types of workload. If you look at the color and the diagrams, you see like some real-time jobs is running 24 by seven, and some NoSQL uh, applications also running 24 by seven. But some analytics jobs are taking, uh, coming and going back. And you also have some daily reporting job that is only taking fast six hours of your day. So if you look at the picture, you see at the beginning of the uh, day, your cluster is overutilized. At the end of the day, uh, your cluster is underutilized because you are staying with a fixed number of nodes in that time. So how you can actually take that and segment the cluster in such a way that you actually isolate cluster based on their usage and based on their usage pattern. Let's talk about common cluster segmentation strategies. 
so that actually you see customers are uh, approaching or uh, using these days. The first one is lifecycle stages. For example, you have QA, dev, staging, and product environment. And all this environment, you may have different user access. So we see uh, customers are using different environments and different EMR cluster to solve different environment. The second one is very common, which is workload type. So you have some users who runs high Apache Hive or Apache uh, Presto queries on the cluster. And we also have some jobs that are actually running some Spark jobs. So you can isolate those cluster based on their workload type. So you have one cluster just serving interactive query. You can have another uh, cluster that actually just focusing on the running the batch ETL. Then you have sometimes you have jobs that, that are time sensitive. That means you have different SLS to uh, meet. And you also wanted to have a consistent environment and runtime. Say you have five jobs, you want every five jobs will take same amount of time and should have same configurations. In that case, you can bring up the cluster, which is uh, uh, run the job and terminate it. In that way, you actually ensure that every time you actually bring up a cluster, it will have the same consistent environment. Also, the job lane. Say you have some jobs which are long running jobs. Say, for example, streaming jobs, it takes, you are continuously running the jobs on the cluster. You have also short running jobs that actually just coming up, taking a couple of minutes and finishing up. So you can segment the cl cluster based on the duration. Say you can run one persistent cluster that actually focusing mainly on long running jobs, for example, streaming or NoSQL, like running HBase on EMR. You can also have short running uh, cl cluster that is just coming up the cluster when you have a data ready and run some ETL or short running jobs and terminate it once it's finished. Then you can also segment your cluster based on uh, organizations or group. For example, you have uh, like a financial organization that actually use EMR cluster to run their queries. You have data engineering group who actually runs different ETL and modeling. So you can actually create clusters based on their group and each of the group can have different accesses. So if you look at the pictures on the left side, you see we have different types of user. We have analysts, who, we also have administrators and we have data scientists and all actually using S3 for your data. Uh, for your data. But if you look at the picture, middle part, we have two different cluster meant for two different use cases. For example, the first one is mainly focusing analyst, and the second one is mainly focusing data scientist. And you can have different configuration for each of those cluster, and while admin can still maintain the entire environment. So in a summary, if you want to know more about cluster segmentation, please check our Amazon EMR migration guide. We have a section dedicated to cluster segmentation strategies and best practices. We also have free on-site two-day workshop where actually you can get a hands-on training as well as we actually talk about your use case and how you can use Amazon EMR and how you can migrate to Amazon EMR. And you can also reach out to AWS representative who can also help you scheduling this workshop. And as well, we also have a website, aws.amazon.com slash EMR slash EMR migrations, where you can find out all these details. Again, this is Tanzir Mustafi. Thank you once again for watching it.